Today we are talking about the AI price wars, which have heated up significantly over the last few months and what they might mean for you and your business. Welcome back to the AI Daily Brief. Today's topic is one that on first glance feels very de rigueur for the moment we're in. Specifically, China's Baidu has released two new AI models, which as always, they claim to have performance as high as, or at least close to, the big American models, specifically GPT, and to do so for cheap. Except the cheap in this case is really cheap. We're talking about a claim that Baidu's new Ernie model matches or exceeds the performance of GPT 4.5 at about 1% of the price, 55 cents per million input tokens as opposed to $75 per million input tokens for GPT 4.5. The other model that Baidu released, Ernie X1, which is their reasoning model, is priced at even 50% of DeepSeek's already low price. And so the sense that many people have is that this is a serious ratcheting up of the AI price war. Today, we're going to talk about how this has been evolving and what it potentially means for a number of different groups. Now, there is a sense, broadly speaking, that the price of AI was going to come down precipitously. In fact, even holding aside the onslaught of Chinese models, intelligence has been getting cheaper at a rate that far exceeds, for example, Moore's Law, which was the previous way that the technology industry thought about the speed at which technology became less expensive. There's a phrase that Sam Altman has been fond of, intelligence too cheap to meter. In July, when OpenAI introduced GPT 4.0 Mini, he pointed out that just two years earlier, the best model in the world was not only much, much worse than the current models, but also 100 times as much. And of course, we've also seen, even within the big tech companies, price as a major competitive feature. Amazon, which still hasn't exactly gotten its feet under it when it comes to its own proprietary models, introduced its Nova Foundation family in December, and it was very clear that part of the strategy was to compete on price. Google has also been trying to use price as a competitive advantage. In February, when Google released its Gemini 2.0 Flash and Flash Lite, again, the major highlight was how much less expensive they were. Indeed, broadly speaking, the price of LLMs and the intelligence they represent has been just absolutely collapsing. But of course, all of this took on a new dimension when DeepSeek launched, claiming that their model, which had very similar performance over comparative OpenAI models, was trained for less than $6 million. That revelation, unconfirmed as though it may be, has rocked the markets and hasn't really let them go. When DeepSeek R1 came out, people started calling it the Sputnik moment, launching a global race for ever cheaper AI. So profound was the psychological mark that DeepSeek left in terms of recalibrating how people thought about where China was in the AI competition, that everything subsequent to that has been, is this the next DeepSeek moment? Last week, we talked about the AI agent Manus, which many people called China's second DeepSeek moment. And once again, while Manus hadn't innovated at the foundation model level, it had created a consumer product that just seemed to beat everything that was available here in the US. Now, once again, we have people calling this Baidu drop another DeepSeek moment. Baidu writes, We've just unveiled Ernie 4.5 and X1. As a deep thinking reasoning model with multimodal capabilities, Ernie X1 delivers performance on par with DeepSeek R1 at only half the price. Meanwhile, Ernie 4.5 is our latest foundation model and new generation native multimodal model. Now, in terms of capabilities, these models have everything you'd expect. They can analyze and summarize documents. They can solve complex problems. But price is really what people are talking about. Now, some have pointed out that while Ernie's X1 model is about half the cost of DeepSeek's R1 reasoning model, DeepSeek's V3 non-reasoning model is still about half as much as Ernie 4.5. Although both of those are, of course, dramatically cheaper than both GPT-40 and GPT-4.5. In response to this, the memes were flying quickly. With a video of a multi-car pileup, Jeffrey Townsend writes, A real-time view of investors in Gen AI foundation models. Low-cost DeepSeek shocked OpenAI. Now Baidu has released super low-cost Journey 4.5. China is driving the cost of AI way down. It's brutal. Sandeep Manodane writes, China's AI firms are not only building fundamentally better models, e.g. DeepSeek, they're building fundamentally cheaper models, e.g. Baidu's. America cannot compete with this if it continues. This is radical innovation, state-funded or otherwise. So what really are the implications of this? Well, first of all, there's the stock market. And obviously, we've seen that the emergence of these models and the idea that they might use much less compute to be able to get this sort of performance threatens the narrative of companies like NVIDIA, which have driven the rally for a couple of years now. I think it's important to have a couple of caveats here. First of all, there's a lot more going on than DeepSeek when it comes to the stock market woes. Right now, we're in a period of extreme volatility and unpredictable futures, and markets are not just dealing with China and AI, but also with tariffs, geopolitical realignment, 
So trying to parse out how much tech stock underperformance has to do with that versus just a correction after two years of basically unfettered up into the right is a little bit harder to parse than people might be making it seem. The other question, of course, more structurally, when it comes to compute, is cost of inference. The Wall Street narrative is still kind of stuck on the idea that the only use of compute is to train new models rather than to deliver those models in practice. The counter argument, the one that companies like NVIDIA have been making, is that the cheaper the models become, the more people use them. The more people use the models, the more inference costs they incur. And so the burden of the compute shifts to a different part of the stack, but still remains. Regardless, it makes things look like a less clear bet, and that could have implications for downstream funding as well. Now, when it comes to startup business models, it's a mixed bag. In the short term, there's a lot that's amazing about this. Downward price pressure means that all the startups out there can do and offer a lot more for a lot cheaper. The more intelligence becomes available in a cost-effective way, the more startups are going to find ways to use it. And that's a very good thing. In the long term, it could be a little bit more challenging. If the price compression continues to be as severe as it looks, it could constrain and limit the band of prices that startups can actually offer. One place that this will specifically come to bear is with regard to agents. Right now, there are lots of different pricing models when it comes to agents. People are experimenting with outcome-based pricing and generally trying to think about things in new ways outside of the traditional SaaS model. But I would say that by and large, they're still benchmarking it against the comparative human labor. If you have a sales or SDR agent, the promise of that agent is that you're going to pay less than the equivalent human time would have cost. However, in terms of how much less, companies are still benchmarking it against the human that would have done the job before. And that still makes them pretty expensive. It seems highly likely to me that someone is going to try to reverse this flow, and instead of pricing it on the basis of what the comparative human time would have been, they're going to price it on the basis of the cost of goods and have a radically cheaper price that undercuts the entire premise of that other model. Now, once again, the countervailing pressure here is that if I'm right and in the future we don't just hire one agent to do the thing that a person used to do, but a thousand agents to do it in a totally different type of way, maybe that all ends up in a wash. But still, the point is that the price war will have impacts on both the startup side in terms of what they can offer, as well as the enterprise side in terms of what they expect to buy. And then, of course, there's the geopolitical dimension of all of this. One of the questions is, how much is this intentional price warfare? Is this China and Chinese companies doing something unsustainable, in fact, and uneconomical in order to cause harm to American competitors? The answer is probably that it doesn't matter, as long as the companies engaging in the price war have deep enough pockets to keep it going. Certainly, the American companies aren't loving it. In OpenAI's proposal for the USAI action plan, they basically argue that deep seek and Chinese AI should be banned, which of course is one way to limit competition. There are other strategies though. Robert Scoble, for example, wrote over the weekend, if I were Mark Zuckerberg, I'd release a badass AI model for free and end this price war once and for all. Why? Because the model that wins will collect more real-time data from all of its 3 billion users, which will make its glasses and services better and more profitable. And indeed, there is a sense that perhaps this is the path. Mark Jeffrey writes, AI smartness goes to infinity, AI price goes to free. Open source style vendors of add-on services and verticals built around AI win. Embodiment of AI in the world of atoms wins and becomes geometrically more valuable with intelligence increases. There is a lot up in the air right now when it comes to the future of the business model of AI. At this point, all that seems clear is that the business side of this is going to change nearly as fast as the technology side. I hope if I've convinced you of anything today, it's that there are actually meaningful implications of this to the AI you interact with, what price you pay for it, and the opportunities that it creates for you. And so I will, of course, keep track of how these things evolve and change over time. For now, though, that's going to do it for today's AI Daily Brief. Until next time, peace.